Hello, this is Eric Bobro. In this ARCHICAD video tutorial, I'll show you how you can use the Morph tool introduced into ARCHICAD 16 for creating facade detail. The Morph tool is a very versatile tool, and it helps to show it in context. So I'm just going to draw a small little building here. We'll pop in, say, a door at that midpoint, and window to the side and then select that window and mirror copy across the center and we'll take a look in 3D. So I have now, if I go to an AXO view here, we'll see just a little building for context. Now, the Morph tool, when I click on it, has many different geometry options. So the starting point, we'll just work with a polygon. I'll just draw a couple of lines here and then click the last point to finish click it an extra time to, to finish that, and then I'll draw, say, a rectangle along here. So if I go to 3D, these actually show up in 3D. This is, even though it's just lines, it is a morph that shows up in 3D, and of course this um, rectangle, which is closed, all the sides connect, shows with a face. And in fact, if I go to the Morph tool and I use the option to add a point, let's just say I want to use the option to add a point and I close this back on itself, as soon as I do that, it will add a face to it. It'll give it a solid appearance. Um, this is sort of optional. We can actually delete faces and have something hollow, but it will, by, for convenience, it will combine these things um, directly. Now let's take a look at how we can edit this shape. Just like a um, other polygons, I can go and select it, press down, um, you know, and use the editing pet palette here um, and uh, you know do editing just like you would expect and if I go back to 3D you can see how it's done the same thing. Now unique to the morph is that I can press down here and I can extrude it. Let's go to the um, arrow tool and with the arrow tool if I select it and press down um, you can see the pet palette allows me to do an extrusion. So if I type in a height say um, you know, one foot, we'll see that we have something like a, just like a one foot slab. But it's actually more flexible, much more flexible than the slab tool. If I go to the corner here, and let's say rotate it, um, I can rotate this, you know, just like you would expect along the floor plan. If we go to the back here, you can see this is the same as rotating it here. But let me instead go to an edge and use that same option. And when I do that, you can see how the compass allows me to switch. I can switch from the normal floor plan orientation to something that's perpendicular to whatever edge I choose. So here it's going to be rotating around one. Here it's going to rotate around a different one. So you choose which one you want to rotate. I'll take this point and then I'll snap it, say, along the axis. I'm going to go and get that um, x-axis. Um, you can see the x-axis line. Uh, that uh, has the X pop up, and then I can take it up and snap it, you know, for example, to the Y axis line. Now I may have to rotate around so that it can get a clear um, line on it, so to speak, but you can see that it's giving me visual feedback to indicate that I'm rotating it 90 degrees around in this orientation. So experiment when you do this with rotating around so you get a clear angle for modifying things. But this is really amazing that we can just flip something up like that. If I look at the south elevation, we're going to see that it's, you know, just precisely been placed. It stayed locked in on its lower edge, which I grabbed and flipped up into position. Now, let me just get rid of this because what I want to do is show you how we can work with the building using this tool. Suppose I wanted to make this building have a more ornate facade shape and not have just a flat top or something that matched a roof. Well, what I can do is, is draw in the shape and use that as a basis for the uh, morph. So let me go ahead and draw a shape with a polyline tool across and uh, take this up to here. So this is half of the shape that I want. Let me just make it a little bit more ornate by um, filleting this uh, corner um, here, and then I'll go and mirror a copy of it across. So now I've got a shape um, 
there for trimming. Maybe I'll uh, go in and um, combine these by using the edit menu and reshape unify. So now this is a single element rather than two. If I select it, you can see they're actually turned into a single polyline element. And let me just drag this up a little bit, um, just get a little bit higher proportion um, there. Now I could draw this down and create a morph that would then be intersected with a wall. Um, and that can be very useful, but I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to do it where it is trimming the wall by basically creating an area above the wall that's going to be cut out. So much like a roof will cut off the top of a wall. So here I'll go and actually extend this. Oops. I've noticed that sometimes the pet palette doesn't work perfectly. You have to go back and, and perhaps select a different option. Then you can get um, this to work. Let's just use the guideline to get this nice and straight. So this is now a polyline that has this shape. And I'll create a morph by magic wanding this polyline. Now I can draw the morph directly on in this view, and I'll demonstrate that a little later, but this was a more complex shape and it was definitely better to create it in a few pieces. Uh, at least I found that a little simpler. Now if I hover over this and select it, you can see that it is selecting a morph. And if I go to 3D and I zoom out, you can see that here is the shape. Now it's way out in front of the building because the elevation line that I, I was taking that particular elevation to draw it is way out here. So basically it drew the morph out there. In fact, you'll see that if I hover over this, um, let's see if I go to the arrow tool, um, I think select all. Actually, where is that morph? Oh, you know what? That morph is above the it's on the next floor up. If I go up to the next floor and then I select all, you can see that there's this morph element floating up above here. So that was a little confusing. But nonetheless, that morph does exist and it is placed here. I think probably the best way to get it more conveniently placed is just to drag it here in 3D and use the drag option and, you know, perhaps get in an orientation where I can snap this along the axis and bring it relatively close to the building like that. Now why am I doing that? Because I want to actually extrude this. I want to bring it across. So I'll press down here and extrude this till it's covering over the top of the building. Take the wall up like this. Let's see that wall. Again, the pet palette is sort of misbehaving. I'm just going to stretch it up. Um, here like that. I had to sort of switch the pet palette to a different option and then come back. And then I can go to the design menu, solid element operations, select the, the morph as an operator, the wall as the target, and subtraction or subtraction with upward extrusion. Either one will work and say execute. And you can see how this wall, the subtle green line um, here. If I were to put this on a layer um, that I hide instead of the ARCHICAD layer, let's say the one for solid element operations. In this case, this layer actually is in wireframe already, so we'll be able to see see the element, but see through it so we can see the results. So you can see what a nice result it's done in terms of cutting that wall. Now let's assume that we might want to do a revision on this. So if I go back to that south elevation, what if we wanted this wall to not be quite as tall, you know, there's a point be a little bit lower. Well, I can go to the morph and I can edit this point. But beware, if I edit this point like um, that, the morph has a thickness. And this is the front face and that's the back face. So it's actually going to, if I go to 3D, we're going to see that it's a slanted top here. So, and it's not actually certainly in line with the the point that I drew this down. So we could go, if I go back to that elevation, we could select this morph and bring this point down in line with it. And in this case, it'll clean up. The, the line that we're seeing here, this is the original polyline, the 2D line, which I no longer need, at least in this case. I'm just going to get rid of it. So we now have a clean result. The wall is here. 
and the morph is there. But sometimes you may want to do some more extensive editing and it's easier or better if you make the morph, if you take the morph back to a single planar face. And this is a little trick that I figured out that I think you'll find very useful. So let's go to 3D and I'm going to go and select this morph here. And actually let's just um, make the layer, let's make it the, this a solid layer so we can see it. So I'm just going to switch the settings. So now we can see that. I'm going to demonstrate something. First of all, I'm going to go and select this morph and right click and say that I'd like to show only what I've got selected in 3D. This is a great little trick for editing elements in isolation. You can select any number of elements and say only show those and it'll hide everything else temporarily. Um, now, in order to get rid of all of the morph except for this face, I need to teach you how you can select individual faces of a morph. With the arrow tool in Archicad 16 or later, you can switch from selecting whole elements to selecting sub-elements of a morph. Click here on this and you can see that it's highlighted this top surface, not the rest of it. And I can do a variety of things. One thing just to quickly demonstrate is that I can change the material of this one face. You can see the number one here that's selected. If I click on this corner point here, or this corner edge, you can see it's selected a line. If I delete it, you can see how it's made this hollow. It actually removed the front face and the side face because that edge was what was connecting it. So let me undo that. So now having taught you how you can select that, I'd like to select the entire back of the morph, leaving the front alone. To do that, I'm going to use the Navigator Preview by clicking this button, and we'll take a top model view and rotate the camera position into a nice straight line. Now I want to select this whole back area, and while I can manually switch between this arrow tool here and the, uh, which selects the whole morph and the sub-elements, what I'm going to do is teach you a shortcut. Press down the Shift key and Control, and you see how the arrow switches. When I let go, it comes back. So Shift, Control will do this. And that's the Control key, both on Mac and PC. Um, it's one of the rare times you use the Control key on the Mac for ARCHICAD. So Shift, Control will allow me to select individual faces or edges, or do the usual marquee where I'm selecting a bunch of things. Hit the Delete key, it's gotten rid of everything except, guess what? That front face. So now it's possible to do some editing. Let's go back to the um, elevation view and let's take this morph and maybe just move a point. So if I move it, you can see there's only one point and this solid um, relationship will be retained. Let me go um, here and um, connect this here and then we'll curve this. So I'll do something just to make a a little dis different design um, study. So now having curved that, let's look in 3D and show all in 3D. Of course the wall lost its trim as soon as I made the morph not solid, so I need to go ahead again and extrude this morph back far enough that it will be able to trim the top of the wall off. So again I'll select this and make it the operator and select the wall, and in fact actually remembered that trim there as soon as it became solid again. So let me just go and um, uh, put this morph on a layer. Um, uh, I'll just go and um, uh, hide this layer. So we'll uh, use the my favorite palette for manipulating layers is quick layers um, there, and we'll just hide that layer so you can see what's happened. So that's a nice trick to be able to just edit the morph as a single plane by getting rid of the other parts of it, the back part of it, the extruded part, so that you can edit it more simply and then re-extrude um, that. I'm going to show you some other um, options here for doing facade detail that are really quite cool. There are some types of uh, uh, architecture where you have more ornate shapes drawn directly or mounted or placed on the facade. Now remember that uh, when I was drawing the original um, morph shape, it was uh, placed back in this area because that's what view I was using. I was using the south elevation view. I'm going to go and create a special view, in this case a section, 
that'll be just along the face of this building, looking in a little bit. And then I'll select that section and open it. This will allow me to create morphs, for example, that are directly on the face of the wall. So I, I'll, I can literally draw a morph directly doing that. I'll say I'd like to draw a re rotated rectangle. Click here and snap to these points and take this a certain distance. And if I look in 3D, we're going to see that there is that little planar surface. But I do want to clean it up. Let me go back to that section here. And let's say that I want to move this point. Now, I can actually move points and snap to the intersections or snap to any other geometry that I need. And so you can see how easily I can make something very clean that fits um, you know, around other elements. Now, if I go back to 3D and I zoom in on this, I can select this and perhaps extrude it. I may want to just rotate around so that it's a little cl clearer what angle I'm extruding um, and then take this out. And the visualization sometimes can get a little bit odd uh, here, but if you gesture in the direction that you think and you type in the value that you want, say one inch, um, it generally will give you the result you want. So you can see how it's made a one inch thick board um, along that. Now, if I go back to that section, we're going to see something a little odd, and that is that it's showing with a fill. And the reason is that section is actually cutting through it. So it's, you know, normally we wouldn't take a section there. We'd have an elevation from outside the wall. Um, so if we were to look at that south elevation, we're going to see that it's just a normal line work um, there. Now, let's say that we wanted to do something ornate for a casing around a door. Um, if I take this door here and we um, change it to something, let's say, uh, having a panel with a little bit more detail, like this. Um, now, the plain casing looks rather, you know, um, let's say, rather, uh, it doesn't have enough weight. Well, let's put it that way. If I go to 3D, we'll, um, you know, perhaps see that even more clearly. So how can we make this casing have a shape, have a molding, have a molded shape? Well, we can't do it, unfortunately, in the standard library for ARCHICAD. It just doesn't allow that. So what I'm going to do is actually um, turn off the casing here and draw it in with, guess what, the Morph tool. You can see I've made this very simple. I'm going to go to the floor plan and zoom in on this. And let's import a casing profile. Now, you can import this from you know, manufacturers. You can um, draw it up from scratch. Perhaps you have some details that you've already done. But I'm going to take advantage of the fact that in the US ARCHICAD library, um, there are some objects that are casings. These are 2D shapes. Um, and I can just select this. You can see there's nothing here in 3D. Here's a 2D, and I can then place this 2D shape. Um, now this, again, if I look at it, it looks nice, but if I go to 3D, there's nothing there. What I'm going to do is actually turn this into a morph. And I don't really turn it into a morph. I simply trace it with the morph tool. Now to facilitate that, I'm going to select this 2D object, and I'll explode it into the current view, keeping just the line work um, there. So having done that, you know, it is now just lines. I can get rid of the little fill there. Now, when I turn it into a morph, um, perhaps I want to uh, uh, just rotate it around into position or mirror it because it, it should be facing the other way. So let me um, go and mirror this um, and uh, drag it a little bit closer. Um, and it's going to be placed right on this corner point, but I need to turn it into a morph, and I'll show you that we can use the morph tool directly. I can try a magic wand this directly, but I found sometimes it's best to use the fill tool to test it, because if I magic wand here, and you see that the magic wand of the fill doesn't connect, I can see what the problem is and maybe clean that up, or sometimes you can just magic wand along the edge, and then the fill is smart enough to fill in any gaps that there might be between the original lines. So now that we have a filled area, I can go to the Morph tool and Magic Wand here. And now this is a morph. 
Now let me just go ahead and drag this into position here, and we'll take a look in 3D. And you see there's now this little face. Now remember that we can select this face here and go and extrude it. And if I do that, it will create a nice molded shape. And we could do something horizontally as well, but it wouldn't miter the corners very easily. But there is a great feature in the Morph tool that allows this. Instead of using the extrusion, I can use the tube option here, the second one from the top, and go up, and then, for example, go across, like this, and keep going. But I'm just going to stop it right now because I want to just demonstrate how it gets a beautiful, clean result. Now, in order to control this and make it snap to the edges of the door, I'm going to go to this corner point, press down, and I have the same tubular option here from the corner as I did when I was clicking in the middle of the face, but it gives me the option to now control it along this point, because I'm actually dragging this point around. So now if I zoom out um, here, I can snap it to the corners of the door, and when I get to this point, I'll just click an extra time to finish it. And you can see that the result is a beautifully clean, mitered corner. So this really is just so much fun and so easy to do that you can create it around, you know, multiple doors um, easily. This is a single element. In other words, if I select it, you can see this morph, I could drag copies of this around, um, you know, for multiple similar doors if I wanted or similar windows. So it's really quite a useful thing. Now, if you did want to raise this up, in other words, you wanted to uh, make space for a plinth block or something like that, um, the best way to do that is to actually sort of pull the face of this up. And I'll demonstrate that as my final um, part of this tutorial. I'll just uh, use the marquee, marquee tool to focus in just on this area, and then we'll rotate underneath and get where I can see the bottom face. And if I select the morph and go to that face, here I'll just say that I want to change the extrusion along this side and take it up, oh, let's say 8 inches, oops, not 8 feet, 8 inches here. Um, and you can see how it beautifully just brought that up. It kept all of the um, the geometry the same. Now, having done that, I'll go and create, let's say, a small plinth block underneath. And I'll just do this by eye here, like this, and select that, going from 0 to the 8 inches, which is about 200 millimeters. And then we'll go back to 3D, and we can see there's the shape that I just created. And uh, Obviously, you can do this at the other corners. You can um, do more elaborate sculptural things um, uh, as needed. Uh, but the Morph tool will play a very important role in some of this um, detailed modeling. It is just so flexible. So this concludes my demonstration. We'll just take a look at everything that we've done in 3D. Um, here, we've got the molded profile going around using the tubular option. We've got a simple extrusion for face uh, details along the facade of the building um, using just drawing it in the section or elevation and extruding it in 3D. And then we have the top face of the wall being trimmed by creating something in the elevation, drawing it with polylines, and then tracing it with the morph tool and using that as a cutting tool with the solid element operations. So I hope you've enjoyed this ArchiCAD video tutorial. This has been Eric Bobro. I look forward to seeing your comments and questions on the page down below. Thanks for watching.